Um, and uh, I will just quickly, while we're waiting, I will just give you a little look at um, what I'm going to show you how to make. This is um, the medium sized one of the uh, templates and um, hi Kim, the templates and the covers pack. Um, and this is the one that I'm going to be using because I think it's going to be easier for me on the screen um, and everything else to use that one rather than try and use something else. Um, now I've just got to make sure I've got plenty of cartridge paper here, which I have, so that's good. Now um, I put on the list of things I didn't put on their construction tape. Now you don't actually have to have it. Um, I mean masking tape is fine anyway, but there is a way of doing this where you use your cartridge paper and um, you can use that to do your joins. So I will go through that with you just so you know. Um, and then, uh, so you don't need the construction tape, but it, it, to be fair, it's actually easier with construction tape. So if you have that, um, it would be better. I just need to um, take off my jacket. I was outside in the cabin this morning and um, it's a bit chilly over there. And now I'm in here with the lovely heater going. I'm very hot now. <laughs> story of my life. Well, I'll just put my mic back on. Okay. Right, so we have a few in. Hopefully um, everybody that's coming is here and I will get started because I think it's it's gone one o'clock now. We, we won't get all of this done today um, so I will do another session on this um, another time. I haven't actually sorted out a date yet. I've had a few things going on just recently, so um, I'm a little bit out of kilter, a bit out of sync with stuff. So um, you possibly have purchased from either Hochanda or ourselves the um, semicircular uh, book and the templates, um, which are these here. Uh, if you haven't, they're I'm not sure if they're still available on Hotchander. I think they've sold out on there, but we've got them on our website. So if you watch this and decide <clears throat> that it's something that you'd like to do, then by all means pop over and order them. Uh, of course, you can use the techniques that I'm going to do on anything. Don't have to purchase anything for that. Um, but this, this live um, is really geared up for people that have bought the kits because I'll be showing you how to use them um, because as with all things that we do you see something on the TV you love it you go and buy it and then you forget what you're meant to do with it so um, it's it's quite nice to be able to sort of go over it all again um, and at least have something finished at the end of it we won't be deleting the videos um, I will be saving the video in here and I'll also upload it to our YouTube channel so you will have access to it. So um, even if you don't follow on today, you don't have to, you can just sit and watch with a cuppa. Uh, you can go in another time and you can watch another time. Um, and also you might play along today, but because you've got three books in the kit, you might decide to do another one another time and you can go back and review it all again. So choice is yours. Um, so basically I'll just run through the kit first of all. You will have three spine pieces and three pairs of covers. You don't need to use the spines. If you watched the show on Hochanda you would have seen me do a sample. I don't know if I've got it to hand. No, probably not. Um, you will see me do a sample um, without using the spines. Um, but I'm going to do this particular workshop with the spine because at least then you'll know how you're going to be using that. Um, so that's that. And you also uh, had the plastic templates in the kit. And there are 
you've got three kind of double sets which create um, the the pages inside like this so these two will create the large one they suit the large covers these two not that one these two create the middle size covers and these two create the small uh, ones for the small covers and then what you can do <clears throat> as you can see in here you can create inner pockets as well by using the next size down so for instance um, if you're doing your large your large size you can use your next size down to create your inner pocket like that if you're doing the middle size you can create uh, you can create an inner pocket with a small one and if you're doing the small one you'll see there's another piece in the set and that is to create the inner pocket for your small one so that's what you do with that you you can either create mini mini po uh, little inner uh, pockets with them like this one or you can create pages so in this particular sample what we're going to make um, you're going to be um, using um, your pages or we're going to be creating pages and we'll we'll sew them in just so you know um, so that's that um, so what we'll do first of all I think is we will go over doing um, the actual covers first of all which I'm going to do on some cartridge paper which I will then stick onto the front all right um, so you have a choice here um, if I just get a piece of cartridge paper what you can do is you can create your cover like this as one piece like that and then uh, what happens there is you would stick the whole thing onto the back and that would in effect because you're not cutting down each piece you will create your spine um, your your join for your spines all right um, have I gone blurry let me oh it's refocusing I think um, um, or what you can do if you have construction tape is what you would do is you would cut your pages out just to suit your cover your spine and your other cover you would construct your book together first and then you stick those over the top and that would give you your um, and that would cover up your construction tape and then that way your construction tape gives you the um, the hinge all right so that's the two ways of doing it I recommend if you have construction tape or masking tape I recommend that's what you use rather than um, doing it as one piece because it is a little bit more fiddly um, to try and stick it all together like that to be honest so um, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to just move out the way the ones we don't want which is the large pieces we want the medium sized spine but we don't want the large and small so I'll pop those out of the way and then we're going to start um, drawing around our pieces because we need to cut them out and stick them on to our books and we're going to put this together with the construction tape okay so um, if I just get some tape first of all and when you're putting together your books you need to make sure that there is I don't know if I can show you on this you need to make sure there is a gap um, between the spine and the cover and the reason why you do that is it means that your cover will bend like this if there's no gap it, it doesn't manoeuvre so you can't just stick the two together flush like that it doesn't work all right um, you need a gap which is roughly speaking the width of your board but I find the easiest way is if you were to 
hold your pieces at right angles like that and then stick your tape on that is a really easy way to get the right um, distance that you need so I'll show you what I mean by that so if we take do you know what I did a demonstration with baby oil um, which if you are interested in that it's in the zone Tendo's creative zone um, and everything I pick up now <laughs> has baby oil on it <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous so what we can do is you get your construction tape you don't need a bit quite as big as i've done there and then you're going to put it so half of it is sticking onto your cover like this and then we're going to line that up at right angles and pop that on there like that and then you can push your tape around at the right angle like that and then that'll open out and you can see there is your ready-made gap okay and as you can see that gap is a similar width to a piece of the same board that you're using just to give you an idea then we can pop that over like that and you need to make sure that you push your tape down into your groove like that and then you can get a smaller piece you might want to cut with scissors if you want a cleaner um, a cleaner join get a smaller piece and put that there like that so that you can see is your movable cover and spine okay and then we're going to do the same on the other side like that okay so we want to put that on first oh hi Jan and then again where you've you pop that on top like that you want to do the same with this one pop it on top and then just turn that over I didn't do that very well let me do that again like that that's it like that and that gives you your ready-made gap like that Is that how you, you do the folder you sent me? Um, i trying to think what I sent you, Jan. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I know exactly what you mean now. Yes, yes, yes. That would be um, that would be the way that you do it. Yes, sorry. I had a, a bit of a, a brain spurt there. <laughs> okay. Right. So that is your cover, you see, like that. Uh, yes, thank you, Jan, for my, my the plaster comment. Yes, it's all right, um, Kim. You don't need to worry. <laughs> Everything's covered up. Uh, not necessarily. You don't have to measure the cartridge paper first, um, as long as you have a piece that's, that's big enough, because you can draw around this and you can make your little marks in there as to where you're going to cut it okay so you don't you don't have to do that um, it's quite easy just to draw around it like this again if you were going to um, you could in fact still put your piece right the way across if you wanted to um, but what you need to bear in mind is you get movement so you would need to have it very slightly bigger to allow for the movement but it's, it's much easier I think if we do it like this so um, I need my pencil and which I put away because I was tidying up so then you've got your piece of cartridge paper here and we can now draw around the whole lot like this 
and like that. And then you can mark off here where your spine pieces are. You don't need to be um, amazingly accurate um, because it doesn't matter if you don't quite get right up to the edge. You've got a nice black um, piece of tape there or whatever colour tape you're using, it doesn't matter. Um, so that finishes off the edge nicely anyway. Okay, so now we can cut this out and I will add I'm going to do all my cutting with scissors today. I have a bit of an aversion with knives at the minute. I just need to, where I've done my little marks, they need to go over your lines because when you cut this out, you'll cut your little marks off. So... Right, that's that. I'm just going to get that paper out of the way and I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. Right, and um, again, you have a, a choice as well here. Oh, hi Maria. You have a, a choice here. Um, you can either decorate this all as one piece um, and then uh, cut it up and stick it on um, or you can cut it up and then uh, stick it on and then decorate it. I'm thinking what I might do today um, because we're stamping I think it might be easier if we actually decorate it flat and then we'll stick it on afterwards okay um, so what we need to do that you are going to find as well um, it is going to be slightly oversized don't worry about that we can just trim tiny bits off a really good way of trimming it down um, is in fact to you can run a craft knife around the edge of there I'm not going to do that <laughs> as I say I've got a bit of an aversion with knives at the minute um, but what I will do is I'll just keep trimming it down until I'm happy with it um, what we're going to do as well is we're going to, to get, um, put a black edge on here and we can do that with ink or with black paint whatever you prefer so if you're doing it with ink um, you can just run your ink round the edge like this I'll do this now because it gives it a chance to dry off You're going to get me some safety scissors. Yeah, all right then, Jen. I probably need them, actually. Now, um, oh, hi, Maxine. Now, um, because you may not be able to cut exactly right up to the edge, you want your black to come in just a tad because then it really won't matter then if you haven't quite got a perfect shape going round. If you, um, oh, hi, Fiona if you um, stick it down and run it around with a craft knife you won't have that problem okay that's that oh hello Sally Ann watching from the first time from Ireland Lovely to have you here. You need to join our group, um, our Tando's Creative Zone. We do lots of lives in there, absolutely loads, if you're not in there already, of course. Yes, it is a bit of a madhouse, Jan, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, so if, if any of you aren't aware of our Tando Creative Zone group, um, we run regular tutorials, 
fun lives we're starting a friday afternoon chit chat session now um, and it's loads of fun well worth joining right i'm going to clean up my fingers because otherwise i get ink everywhere which isn't a good idea okay so what we're going to do um, I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to do this in parts um, rather than one whole piece like that so what I'm going to do is find my ruler whoops that's it let's pop that up there and I'm going to just draw oh getting in a right tangle here draw a line down there like that and draw a line down there like that and then I know that I can cut along that edge like that okay so these will be your three pieces now as I say you have a choice you can actually glue these on before you decorate them or you can decorate them first and then glue them on it's it's your choice okay so that's your three pieces that are going to go like that um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them separately first so first of all we need to get some paint and I'm going to use some red paint first of all just a nice bright red messy red and I'll put some on my palette I'm not sure if you can see my palette I'll catch up in a minute I think you can um, nice clean brush with a bit of oh that will do actually and what we're going to do is we're going to just paint our first coat on now um, if you are using cartridge paper it is going to curl but don't worry once it's all dry it'll all glue down nice and flat onto your board That's it. Now, if you have decided to stick your paper onto your board first, you won't get the curling so much. Um, because it's obviously already stuck to your board I'm just going to give that a wipe because otherwise if I don't clean it up you're going to see all these paint marks everywhere and it'll confuse you as to what I'm doing I'll just get a bit of kitchen roll which has just reminded me I need to add kitchen roll to my shopping list today <laughs> because that's the last of it that I have so that's your first piece then we will get some more paint now you can use obviously any paint the fact that you're painting onto your paper means that you can use um, watercolors if you want to um, or you can use your soluble pencils um, you know there's all sorts of things you can obviously do whatever you do on your paper whatever you can do on paper then obviously you can do that on here it's a bit different if you're uh, painting directly onto the grey board you have um, not that many limitations but a few um, 
obviously if you pre gesso so if you put a coat of white paint or or even chalk paint colored chalk paint on the bottom on your your gray board as a base you can pretty much use um, all sorts of different paints over the top of that um, because you've already got a white kind of base there if you're painting directly onto the gray board then you really need a decent acrylic paint uh, which is fairly opaque otherwise you're going to see the grey through it unless that's the effect that you want I've actually seen things done whoops my phone's just fallen over um, I've actually seen things done um, where you have um, where people have used a technique where you can actually see some of the grey board through and it does look really quite nice to be honest so now we're going to do this one like this need a bit more paint like that That's it. and you can see where the first piece has dried it's it's drying nice and flat again so it's only going to be curly for a little while You need baby oil do you Jen? Uh, yes the baby oil technique um, was really rather good wasn't it? I rather enjoyed that one. I was saying earlier on right at the start I don't know if you heard that um, everything when I was clearing up earlier everything was completely covered in baby oil everywhere. I just, just, just gets everywhere but I've managed to clean a lot of it up now. Right okay so <clears throat> while we're letting that dry I'm going to get another piece of cartridge paper uh, there and I'm going to do exactly the same again um, because we want to put um, some on the inside as well um, it doesn't again you don't need to um, because where you're sticking these pages down you're not going to see very much of it and what I've actually done on the inside of this is I've just literally painted over the construction tape um, but it's not a perfect look so for us to make it really neat and tidy we're going to do um, this again but you don't need to paint over the whole area like you did before so I will just get my pen and paper um, my pencil rather go around there like that very quickly and then mark that in I will cut this out again And as I say this step isn't absolutely essential if you don't mind painting over your construction tape or masking tape you're not going to see very much um, of it so it really doesn't matter and of course it's it's one for speed as well if you want to get something done a little more quickly um, then by all means you don't need to do this step So I shall just trim that off like that and then um, because as you can see you don't actually see very much because you've glued your inner pages down 
you're going to see more of the spine area if you look down so for your two semicircular pieces we just literally need to just do the edge with a bit of red paint like that like that you're not even going to see the bottom very much but and then up there like that okay so I shall move that out of the way have a quick mop up The spine piece, I'm going to do all of it. We do need a little bit more paint. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Not on top of my T though, because I want that. And then we'll just quickly put some on this final piece here. Tiny bit more paint. There. Uh, my craft area is covered with a big sheet of white plastic, um, which I got from uh, my brother who um, deals a lot with plastic and he had scraps which I spotted in his <laughs> his scrap bin uh, and I said oh I would like some of those and he said yeah of course and he gave me a huge handful they were just going to the skip which to me is sacrilege really um, but I just find it quite useful because I'm, I'm quite messy so I can't find it quite useful just to have something um, that I can lay over and I can just clean up the only problem with it yeah use very useful to have a brother with scraps I have to say the only problem with it is it's not good under heat it all curls up it all bubbles up a bit um, so I need to remember to anything I'm heat drying I need to remember to put it on something that won't curl up so it's not perfect by any means, but for a freebie, I'm not going to complain. OK, so now we've got <coughs> our first colour down. OK, uh, we're going to clean up this bit of paint here, which I've managed to use up quite nicely. And we're going to go in with some of the burgundy. Okay. And first of all, we're going to give it a bit of a wash. Um, I don't know if you can see it too well on, on here, but it's slightly lighter uh, in the middle than it is around the edges. So for the first coat, I'm going to just add a little bit of water and I'm going to create oh hi Sue good to see you I'm going to create a bit of a wash first of all I'm just cleaning my brush again oh a bit of rubbish on there so we're going to pick up a bit of colour and add some water to it and we're going to just wash this over like this I probably have not added quite enough colour um, so what I will do hi Diane um, is for this next one I'm going to do a little bit more make it a little bit deeper colour that's a bit better like that I'm 
okay and then we want to just get this dry so get your heat gun my heat gun's a little bit noisy i've actually got two and one of them is a little bit um volatile um but what i need to do actually is just get something to pop it on that's it so i've got a piece of acrylic here um which doesn't buckle under the heat that out of the way I'm going to give that a quick mop up that's it like that that's it okay <clears throat> so I think I probably just want to go a tad a tad darker with this so I'm just going to get a little bit more paint like that I've still got some water here so add a bit of water again we're going to put this on as a wash like that and this one and this one okay put that out the way and i'm just going to wipe that up very quickly need another baby wipe like that okay so i'm going to dry these off <laughs> uh, well yes it is blood colored i guess jen um probably a good job i'm not using any knives <laughs> can't believe how silly I was really but there you go rushing too much Okay, so what we can do now is we can kind of edge this with a, a, a darker colour. So I will just mop up the very watery parts of this because we don't need that. And then I will put some fresh clean water down. Now a lot of people have seen me do this technique but for those of you that haven't um, basically what you do is you load your brush half and half so half with color 
and half with clean water. So put that back with it. So what you're doing on one half of the brush, you're picking up colour. Hopefully you can see that. And then on the other half of the brush, you're picking, you're loading it up with water. And then with the colour to the outside, you're going to run this down like that. And what that basically does is it creates a, almost like a vignette style. So um, you'll have your darker colour to the outside and the water will make it blend in. You can use this very same technique um, with two different colours of paint as well, which actually looks really nice, especially if you're painting petals and things like that and you want a blend. So that's like that. And then I'm just going to finish off in the middle just with a little bit of water so you don't get any lines. And I shall pop that to one side. I'm going to need some more paint there. And then again, half paint, half water. And then you're just going to run. It's a good way, this, of starting this technique because the colours are not remarkably different. Um, so it's quite forgiving. As you get a little bit better at the technique, you can obviously um, put a stronger vignette round things um, by using sort of more contrasting colours. Um, certainly browns and that make very good kind of vignettes and black of course um, so um, you can create sort of really quite nice effects but it does take a little bit of practice to get it to work right so to have the, the colours um, quite similar is, is a good start. We just fill that in with water there, like that. Okay, I'll pop that in there. Move that out of the way. And then I'm going to give those a dry in a second. What I'm going to do first of all while I've got this paint out is I'm just going to put another vignette style um, coating around the edge of these as well like that obviously didn't pick up very much water that time that we'll get that out of the way quick wipe you can see I'm going to be getting through a few baby wipes today or you can use old rag which of course is much better for the environment I just happen to have an awful lot of baby wipes that I need to get through okay last one which I put over here these bits of course aren't too important because they're going to be mostly hidden away 
but it's a way you can just practice the technique a little bit more. Like that. So we pop those out of the way and then I'm going to go back to the original ones and we'll give them a dry. So this time you want to make sure that they are pretty dry because we're going to be stamping and embossing and what you don't want is for the embossing powder to stick to your damp paper. Okay, so that's those pieces. We have a little bit of a clean up on here as well. Okay, so I I'm going to be using a scripty stamp which I had here ready to use there it is this is a chocolate brock scripty stamp um, I love the chocolate brock stamps I'm just going to have a quick um, little bit of tea which is cold now actually but never mind um, and you need a Versamark Um, something that you can tip your um, powder onto and I'm using clear detail clear embossing powder all right and then what we're going to do again if your stamping isn't perfect don't worry because if you have a look at the sample you're just getting a hint of stamping here um, yes you can see it shining slightly when you move it around but if you've got any imperfections you're not going to notice that at all all right so don't worry if your stamping isn't that great so um, I'm going to ink up my stamp first of all like that 
and I need to remember which way around this goes because I do get it upside down a lot. I should mark the back really. Right, so I'm now going to start stamping. Oops. And the aim of it, because the stamp is effectively too small, okay, is you can actually see where your Versamark has gone. Um, and you can kind of almost join it up. But as I say, it doesn't matter if it overlaps slightly. It doesn't matter if um, it's not perfect stamping because you're really not going to see that much of it at all. Like that. And then one last bit there. And then I'm going to pop that onto my piece of card here and pour over my embossing powder. Now my embossing powder may possibly have bits of other colours in it <laughs> but don't worry. Now you can see this is where if your um, paper isn't quite dry you can see where you get little patches um, of your embossing powder stick. Uh, you can just get the worst of it off with a little paintbrush so you don't get big clumps of powder. But because, as I said before, you're not going to see very much of it, it's just a hint, it's really not a big issue at all. Um, so just removing the large pieces are enough like that. that in there and then I'm going to get this out again. If you haven't done embossing before you need to heat this and then you'll see it go clear. Now you don't want to stick your finger in it straight away because it's going to be hot just for a, a few seconds. I'll try and hold that up so you can see the embossing there. Hopefully you can see that. And then we need to do that with all three pieces. So I'll get that out of the way. And then that like that. And then we'll pop that onto out oh, there it is. The what? Oh yes, I think I probably have. They're quite big sheets, though, Jan. Um, they're kind of not. Um, they're not postable size, <laughs> unless you don't mind them cut down to a smaller size. <laughs> okay. So that's the middle one and then we've just got to do the other cover 
here. You think the kit smells heavenly, Jan? Well, that is the, the smell probably of the laser cut grey board, which I don't think <laughs> smells very nice at all. But I guess it's because I have to deal with it all the time. <laughs> It's not one of my favourite smells in the world. <laughs> I do quite like the smell of the um, the stencils, though the, the 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 plastic cutting. That has kind of like a sweet smell to it. But no, the smell of greyboard and MDF doesn't appeal really. Oh, you love it, do you, Jan? that one and then we just want a little bit more this end and then a little tiny touch at the top like that <laughs> I'm the weirdo am I <laughs> mm, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Okay. Right, we just have got a few bigger clumps here that I just want to get rid of. Nothing major. And as it's gone clear, as you could see, it's not that important. If you were doing this with um, a colour, then you'd obviously probably want to spend a bit more time just drying, making sure your paint was dry before you do this stage. It's a lovely stamp, Jan, actually, this scripty stamp. I've got a thing about scripty stamps. I think that I need some more. I do use them quite a bit. And um, I do tend to keep going back to the same ones all the time. So I think I kind of need a, a bit more. Right, get another one of these and I'll just give this a quick wipe up. Okay, so before we do the next step, which is putting on these splashes of colour, this is actually going to be easier to do um, once it's all stuck on. Okay, so I think at this stage we can actually stick on our pieces. I've just dropped something on the floor. It's a template. Right, that's it. Um, now, uh, we can stick our insides on as well. So you'll be able to see when you lay it down um, that it is it is too big. All right. Uh, but because you've got your black coming in, um, what you can do is you can lay it so you're just just inside here flip it over oh excuse my phone beeping flip it over and just draw around the edge there and that gives you a guide as to how much you need to cut off um, or you glue it on flip it over and then use your craft knife okay oh you're doing um oh you're doing some of the dt stuff and you've got your pink on have you fiona do you know what when you posted the other day and said <coughs> excuse me that we were going to see something different from you i did wonder whether it might involve some pink i can't wait personally so as you can see that now is a much better fit okay so we can stick that down um for anybody that hasn't used gray board before uh, if you're sticking paper down 
um, you need to, you don't need to use a really really strong PVA glue um, it's just something that will do the job mainly I'm talking what I'm trying to find my glue because I tied it up earlier and I've now put it I don't know where I've put it um, if you're gluing grey board to grey board then you do really need a fairly decent PVA um, we sell a wood glue which is really good but if you're using something like your cosmic shimmer or um, that kind of thing those glues they're all great as well and I still can't find my glue oh there it is hiding um, so we're going to put some glue onto the paper uh, you can also use red liner tape that's absolutely fine as well and you want to try and make sure you get your glue right up to the edges like that I think I've got a blockage actually I might need to sort that out in a minute so this is going to be the inside so we're just going to glue that down uh, the good thing about using wet glues as well is you do have a bit of maneuverability um, so if you don't quite put it down straight you do get options to just move it around a little like that okay right so this one is going to be a little bit wide and a little bit long so oh i've got i've got somebody coming up the stairs who might possibly jump on my lap in a minute hello oh you're all wet is it raining outside molly moo is up here so i'm just going to trim this down This is a, only the inside, so um, it's it's not doesn't need to be perfect by any means. Trim a little bit off the bottom. What looks the wrong way round? Why is it the wrong way round, Jan? That's the inside. That's the outside. Anyway, I don't know perhaps tell me what you mean so that goes on there like that now I think I might have a blockage so I'll take the lid off of this and just poke a needle through I think you've done it as a border still don't know what you mean yes Jan it's the inside and these pages stick to it okay so you're not gonna you're actually only gonna see the top the reason why we're doing it is to cover up the black tape um, on this sample I just painted over the black tape okay um, you're probably not even going to see the bottom part of it but I've decided to just go around the edge all the way around the edge so that you can make sure nothing is going to be showing okay but you didn't need to paint the whole lot because the pages are going to go over the top okay <clears throat> sorry I did explain it earlier but um, it might have been before you came in lovely right so let's see if this is going to work better now for me yes okay 
so then we pop that one on there okay so that's your inside <laughs> that's all right Jan it doesn't matter okay and then this one we're going to just obviously just tuck that up where we want it roughly on the, by the spine and at the bottom and flip that over and then just draw around the edge there but as I say you can stick it down and then just cut round with a craft knife because the, the board is over two millimeters thick it does actually give quite a nice edge but you must be very careful otherwise you end up with plasters on your fingers <laughs> as I have okay that's it that and then we shall glue that one to there like that okay so that's your inside done And then we can flip it over and we can start looking at this to glue these pieces down okay so again just lay that actually lay that there how you want it to be and flip that over draw around the edge like that and then you can just cut that piece out like that. obviously make sure that you've got it the right way up now I just think I want a little tiny tad more off of there because it's just got a little overhang so I'm just going to trim a little bit more off Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So, get your glue again. Oh, messy glue. Perhaps it's burst out of the bottle. Like that. of rubbish out of the way just get rid of the excess glue if you have any we'll do this one obviously you've got to make sure you put it down the right way up which I think is that way we just trim that down a little bit and a little bit off the bottom
yep fine with that so we'll pop a bit of glue on there I think I must have a split in my bottle because I keep getting a gluey bit on the bottom I have to get another one uh, yes Sally Ann um, what basically will happen is uh, I will save this um, live and it will save into this page and I will also um, download it thank you Margaret I will also download it and um, put it into our YouTube channel so if you need to if you need to go off and do something else that's absolutely fine it'll all be here ready for you to pick up on when you've got time this is the beauty of these uh, lives and um, why we try to do quite a lot of them these days and I think it's something that will continue as well um, even once the face-to-face -face classes resume because not everybody can make the face-to-face -face classes for one anyway um, and also it means that you can just drop in and drop out and get reminders and things like that so um, certainly uh, certainly it's the way to go I think in some respects uh, but yes Sally Ann as I think I, I think you may have been here when I was saying earlier do pop in to um, our Tando's creative zone because we have lots of lives in there um, and we're, we're running them sort of quite regularly we had one last night the lovely Jan who did a super tag and then um, we've got something else going up tomorrow which is Lisa's house uh, but that will be a pre-recorded video because not all the design team have got uh, the broadband equipment to actually do lives because not everywhere you can get broadband good enough um, we never used to be able to do it here because we're kind of in the middle of nowhere here um, but they actually piped fibre in down the road for us and it now means I can do lives which is brilliant because we're very lucky uh, we've got it actually piped into the house as well now so um, and I think even we can upgrade and make it even faster if we want to I think they keep sending me letters about it I think once it's in you kind of can move with the times a bit more and we are literally sort of like in the middle of a field so we are quite lucky really yeah that's the thing isn't it um that is the thing i think a lot of people are doing a lot more online now um it's just the way things have gone oh hello lisa i didn't know you were there yeah i know it's it, but not everybody has got access to you know the the faster broadband at the moment and we appreciate that as i say it's only been recently that we had access to it here so anyway i'm looking forward to your um your video lisa i hope you left the singing in because the singing was good right okay so that is um your outside cover done um apart from obviously these splashes of color that we're going to put on okay and then obviously your insides are fine we're going to cover most of that up you're not going to see very much of that at all so um i just want to add a little bit of black actually along there because i haven't quite covered that up properly that's it that looks a bit better right so to add these bits of color on here 
so I'll just have a bit of a tidy up I'll need to put my blue tack on there good tip from Jan to use blue tack on the top of your glue it stops it from drying up that's a definite no is it Lisa oh what a shame <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you Maria right yes Sally Ann okay um, yes these kits we sold um, on Hotchanda and we've also got them on our website I don't actually think they've got them available on um, Hotchanda now because we sold out but they are available on our website as two separate items on our website um, you buy the sets of the covers um, I'll pop links into this actually at the end uh, you could buy sets of the covers so you get three sets of covers and spines different sizes um, and then you also can buy separately which are worth getting these templates um, which I will show in another live um, how we do the insides okay um, so yes by all means they're they're uh, on the website if you're interested in following along with this then it's there so just go in and, and purchase them obviously the templates you can use again and again and again so you'd only purchase them once your cover sets you just buy them as you need them okay right so um, I'm now going to go with a bit of turquoise lovely Sally Ann been lovely to chat to you my love a um, little bit of turquoise on here like this and then what we're going to do now is we're going to use a palette knife okay it doesn't matter whether you use one like this or whether you use one like that either is fine or you can use a credit card um, anything like that um, uh, bye for now Sally Ann um, and then you want to pick up just a teeny bit on your palette knife you don't want a lot here I'll show you that nice and close and then what you're doing is you are literally just creating a little stroke down like this and then we're just going to pop another little bit like that pop a bit there like that and what you'll see is where it's running over the text it will just highlight and pick up the text a little bit best to say less is more you can always add a little bit more if you want to but it's not so easy to wipe it back be quite random with it uh, yeah I guess so yeah kind of patina I get uh, effect I guess Maria yeah so we want to do the same on the spines like that okay and then a little bit on the back cover again you're not being perfect here you are literally just putting tiny bits of color on and as I say less is more don't overload your palette life too much you can always go over it again and add a little bit more so what I'll do is I'll try and hold that up so you can see and you'll be able to see little areas where it's picked the text up okay 
and then to finish that off we're going to do the same again but with a little bit of white but first of all I just want to give it a quick blast it should dry fairly quickly but you you want to have the white standing out so we'll get some white make sure it's dry yeah not too bad uh, we'll get some white and then a little bit on your palette knife again not a lot you don't want a lot as I say less is more you can always add and then I'm just actually going to put a little bit a trail <laughs> do you know what Lisa you say that and I have many times when I forget what a word is or what something's called it happens a lot um, and it's really bad and sometimes I've even started to say something and forgotten what I was actually going to say <laughs> And you're you're almost sitting there with like a, a fish with your mouth opening and closing thinking what's going to happen next <laughs> good old Celia okay so we are just literally adding in just little bits of white here and there and you can really see uh, in places where it picks up that text oh you do that constantly do you <laughs> Margaret Oh dear. It was this last night, Lisa. I haven't I haven't seen all of last night's so I I've had other things happening and I did catch a bit of it but not a lot. Um so I must catch up and have a look. Right, okay. So that's your covers done. All right, that's all we need to do for that. Um, so that's basically it for that part. The next part is going to be to do the insides, which I'm not going to do today. I'm going to do this as a separate live. Um,